Hi Native Scripters! Welcome to this bonus round on the tutorial for creating a floating action button in Native Script using CSS and JavaScript. Now the previous four videos in this tutorial that you saw deal with creating the floating action button in iOS and Android using pure JavaScript and CSS with no plugins. However, there was something missing and some of you with a keen eye have noticed that there was no shadow under our button. And according to material design specs, there should be a shadow. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add that extra shadow. It's a very subtle effect, but it makes it look like the button is floating above the background, which is the desired result. This is where we left off in the last tutorial. We have a float button with the stack layout and a label inside. We're going to add a couple more things here to make the shadow effect. I'm going to go ahead and kick off the live sync on our iOS emulator and the Android emulator. Okay, and here they are running side by side. As you can see, we have a list, we have a button, but we don't have a shadow. So let's go to the code. I'm going to save space while I'm doing this and only show you one of these emulators, but I'll show you both of them in the end to see the final results. Let's go ahead and move this over a little bit and open up the code. And the float button component is open. And that's the only file I'm going to be working in. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down so you can see the emulator and the code at the same time. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap this stack layout with another stack layout. And the outermost is going to get a class of float button shadow. And I'm going to use the loaded event here to attach the shadow to my element. So I need to create this on loaded handler down here in my code. Now this args parameter is actually an event data type. But I'm not going to type it just to save some time and space. So we're going to leave it as the any type. Now the args parameter has an object property on it, which in this case is a stack layout, but I'm going to cast it to any. Args.object is what we're interested in, and I'm going to set it to TNS view as a local variable. Just remember that it's a stack layout. Since adding a shadow is not a cross platform approach, we need to check for each platform independently. So if TNS view has an Android property on it, that means we're running on Android. I'm going to add the shadow for Android. Otherwise, if we have the iOS property on the view, then we're running on iOS. And I'm going to add the iOS shadow here. Since I have the iOS emulator running, let's go ahead with that one first. Let's go ahead and grab a reference to the native view. And that's going to be TNS view iOS. That's going to give us the actual native view that the stack layout wraps. Now we're going to be working with some native code directly. I'm not going to make you sit through watching me type this. I'm just going to paste in the code here. If you're interested, you can read the iOS documentation. You'll see that each view has a layer property on it. And we can add the shadow color, shadow offset, opacity, and radius to the layer. So our class needs a shadow color property, and it needs a shadow offset property. And we also need to declare the CG size make global function. So let's go up here and start with the declarations. Declare constant CG size make, and that's going to be of any type. And since I'm going to be using Android in the future, I'm just going to go ahead and declare it here as well. And that's going to be of type any also. Now let's go ahead and create the shadow properties, the shadow color and the shadow offset properties, and we're going to put them up here. I'm going to paste them in right here at the top. There's our shadow color, and that's of type color, which we're going to need to import from native script. And our shadow offset property returns 2.0. Let's go ahead and import the color class from native script. And now TypeScript is happy. So our iOS side is completed. Let's save this and see the result. Okay, so we see a shadow now behind our button. This is great. Okay, now let's do the Android side. So I'm going to bring up the Android emulator and move it to the side. So in this case, if we're detecting that the Android property is there, that means we're running on Android. So I'm going to paste in this native code. And here we're saving a reference to the native Android view. Then we're creating a gradient drawable, which is available to us through the Android graphics drawable property. And it's going to be an oval shape. And the background color is going to be this light blue that we've been using for the button. So we're going to set the background of this native view to this shape that we've created. And we're going to set the elevation to 20. Elevation is what raises the button off the page in the Z axis. Let's save that and see the result. So we get our shadow, but notice in Android, we have a little bit of a cutoff shadow here. That's not looking too good. So we need to fix that somehow. So what's happening here is the shadow is getting clipped by the boundary of the stack layout. What I'm going to do to fix that is wrap it in another layout. This time I'm going to use the grid layout. 
And this grid layout needs to be slightly larger than the button itself so that there's room for the shadow to render. So I'm gonna add another class here on the grid layout and that's gonna be the outermost wrapper. So I'm gonna call it float button wrapper and I'm gonna define it here in the styles. Now the current button is 56 by 56. So my wrapper needs to be bigger than that. Let's make it 75 by 75 to give that shadow enough space. So our app restarts, but you see we have a little problem again. And that's because this stack layout that's inside the wrapper, the float button shadow stack layout, is taking up the entire space of the wrapper. So it's bigger than the button. So we need to define the float button shadow class also and make that the same size as the float button. And it needs to be exact, so we'll make it 56 by 56. Now once I save that, we're back to a normal size button. And we have the list scrolling and we have a shadow and the shadow is not being clipped. So that's great. Now there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Sometimes we run into a small problem with the loaded event in native script when we want to access certain native properties. And there's a clip to bounds property on layouts that is somehow inaccessible when you change it in the loaded event. I've added this bit of code just to get around that specific problem. What I do is call a global set timeout function in the loaded event. I set the clip to bounce property on this view to false. And I also look at the native view and set the clips to bounce property to false there as well. And I do this with a slight delay of 200 milliseconds. Now in this case, with our floating button, it works without adding the set timeout code. So I'm gonna remove that. There are cases where clip to bounce doesn't get respected. So keep that in mind when you're working with shadows. And if you run into that problem, you can try this trick. Okay, well, there you go. You have your button and you have your shadows. Thanks for watching this bonus round and I'll see you in the next video.